In this video, I'll be talking about fruit. I'll provide the botanical definition of fruit and explain why some people may use different definition in everyday life for different fruit. Also, identification of regions of mature fruit will also be mentioned. And I will be stating types of fleshy fruit, types of dry fruit, and also other fruits such as aggregates and multiple fruits. What is fruit? A fruit is a mature oval. It is any ovary and its accessory parts that has developed and matured. A fruit usually contains one or more seeds that develop from fertilized ovum within the ovary. By this definition, many so-called vegetables, including string beans, cucumber, squashes, and tomatoes are really fruits. All fruits develop from ovaries. So, they are produced only by the flowering plants. In some exceptional cases, example in banana, which is a fruit, this banana develops without fertilization. This type of fruit is said to be patenocarpic. Patenocarpic, that is a fruit that develops without fertilization and they usually do not contain seeds. Now to the regions or parts of fruit. Most of a mature fruit has three regions, which sometimes merges and can be difficult to differentiate from one another. One of the parts of a mature fruit is the skin, which forms the exocarp. Exocarp. While the inner boundary around the seeds forms the endocarp. The endocarp may be hard and stony. It also may be peppery, as in apple. And sometimes the endocarp in fruit may be merged with the mesocarp, which is often fleshy tissue between the exocarp and the endocarp. These three regions, that is the endocarp, mesocarp, and exocarp, are collectively called the pericarp. Although in dry fruits, such as maize or corn, the pericarp is usually quite thin. Some fruits consist of only the ovary and its seeds. Others have adjacent flower parts, such as the receptacle or the kelings, fused to the ovary or different parts, modified in various ways. Fruits may either be fleshy or dry at maturity, and the dry fruit may split, exposing the seed. Now to the kinds of fruits. The first fruits I'll be mentioning are the fleshy fruits. Fleshy fruits are fruits whose mesocarp is at least partly fleshy at maturity. Now, under fleshy fruits, that is fruit whose mesocarp is at least partly fresh, fleshy at maturity, we have different types of fleshy fruits. Number one are berries. Berries. Berries usually develop from a compound ovary and commonly contain more than one seed. In berries, the entire pericarp, that is, made up of the endocarp, mesocarp, and exocarp, is fleshy, and it is difficult to differentiate between the mesocarp and the endocarp. There are three types of berry. True berries. Example of true berries are tomatoes, grapes, peppers, and eggplants. It might interest you to know that some fruits that include the word berry, such as strawberry, 
raspberry, blackberry, botanically are not berries at all. All these so-called berries are actually called aggregate foods and we shall get to aggregate fruits later. These are so because all these so-called berries such as strawberry, raspberry and blackberry are derived from flowers with inferior ovary so that other parts of the flower such as the calyx receptacle also contributes to the flesh. The second types of berries are pepples. Pepples are berries with relatively thick rings. Mentioning rings, what comes to mind is oranges. But fruits of the members of the popkin family, which include popkin, cucumbers, watermelon, squashes, are pepples. The top type of berries are the esperidium. Esperidium is a berry with a leathery skin containing oils. In Esperidium, numerous outgrowths from the inner lining of the ovary wall become sac-like and swollen with juice as the fruit develops. All members of the citrus family produce this type of fruit. Examples of Esperidiums are oranges, lemon, lime, grapefruit, tangerine, etc. So we have three types of berries, which are true berries. Examples are tomatoes and grapes. The second types of berries are called the pepples, which are cucumber, watermelon, pumpkin, etc. And the top types of berry are the asperidium. Examples are the citrus, such as orange, lemon, lime, grapefruit, etc. The second type of fleshy fruits I will mention are the droop. Droop is a simple fleshy fruit with a single seed enclosed by a hard stony handle cap or pit. Note, droop mostly have a single seed. In droop, the mesocarp is not always obviously fleshy. However, in coconut, the usk, which is made up of the mesocarp and the exocarp, which is usually removed before the rest of the fruit is sold in market, is very fibrous. The seed of the coconut is hollow and contains a watery endosperm, commonly referred to as the coconut milk. It is surrounded by the thick, hard endocarp, typical of a droop. Other examples of droops are apricots, cherries, olives, almond. The third type of fleshy fruits are the palms. Palms are simple fleshy fruits for which most of the flesh comes from the enlarged floral tube or receptacles that grows up around the ovary. The endocarp around the seeds in palms are always papery or leathery. Examples of palm include apple and pears. So for fleshy fruits, we have the droop, a berry, and the palms. The next is the dry fruit. Dry fruits are fruits whose mesocarp is usually dry at maturity. And under dry fruits, we have two types, the deicent fruits and the edicent fruits. The deicent dry fruits are fruits that split at maturity. Deicent dry fruits are fruits that split at maturity, while edicent dry fruits are fruits that do not split at maturity. These fruits are mostly in form of pots. The dry fruit, which split at maturity, that is the decent fruits, are also distinguished from the way by which it splits. Under this group, we have the follicle, we have the legume, we have the silic, and the capsule. The follicle splits along one side only exposing the seed within at maturity. 
Example is milkweed or larkspur. The second type of decent fruit are the legumes. The legumes are very common fruits. These fruits split along two sides at maturity. Examples include the peas, the beans, the lentil, etc. The third type of decent fruit are the silic. Silic also split along two sides. But the seed are bond or that is carried on a central partition, which is exposed when the two halves of the fruit separate. Silix are produced by the members of the mustard family. Examples of silix are the broccoli, cabbage, radish, watercress, etc. And the last type of the decent dry fruit are the capsule. The capsules are the most common of the dry fruit that split. They consist of at least two capsules and split in a variety of ways. Some split along the partition between the capsule, while others split through the cavity in the capsule. Examples of capsule are orchids, lily, violet, or their simple okra. The next, the next type of fruit are the edacent fruit, that is dry fruit that do not split at maturity. In edacent fruit, the single seed is united with the pericarp. Examples of edacent dry fruit are the akins and the sunflower seeds. Under the edacent dry fruit, we have the nuts, the grains, the Samara. On the nuts are one seeded fruit similar to akins, but they are generally larger and the pericarp is much other and thicker. Example is hazelnut and hickory nuts. Botanically speaking, many nuts are not nuts. For example, peanut botanically is not a nut but a legume. Walnut are not also botanically not, but are droops. The next are grains. Grains, also called caryopsis, is tightly united with the seed and cannot be separated from it. All members of the grass family, including the corn, wheat, rice, oats, and barley, produces grains. And these are idescent dry fruits also known as caryopsis. The next is the Samaras. In this, the pericarp surrounding the seed extend out in the form of a wing or membrane, which helps in the dispersal. The next types of fruit are the aggregate fruit. Aggregate fruit. Aggregate fruit is derived from a single flower with several to many pistil, which is the male part of the flower containing the anther and the filament. The individual pistil develop into tiny droops or other fruitlets, but they mature as a cluster unit on a single receptacle. Examples of aggregate fruits are raspberry, blackberries, and strawberries. The last category of fruits are the multiple fruits. Multiple fruits are derived from several to many individual flowers in a single inflorescence. Inflorescence is the word used for a pack of flowers. Each flower in the inflorescence has its own receptacle, but as the flowers matured separately into fruitlets, they develop together into a single larger fruit that is the cluster together, as in aggregate fruit. So examples of multiple fruits include pineapples, mulberry, and figs. In multiple fruits, the individual flowers are fused together on a fleshy axis, and the fruitlet coalesce into a single fruit. So... Pineapple 
are multiple fruits. So now that you know the botanical terms for classes of fruit, kindly answer this question in the comment section. What classes of fruit does the following plant belong to? Number one is sarsop. Sarsop. Number two is cashew. Cashew. Number three is mango. Mango. Number four, African star apple, also known as cherry. Number five, strawberry. And number six, purple. Kindly mention the classes of fruit botanically, which this belongs to in the comment section. Thank you. Now that you know the type of fruit, you will note and realize that fruits are named based on the part of the flower which forms the mesocarp, the endocarp, and if or whether the accessory organs are associated with the fruit. So make sure you like this video, comment, and share with others. Thank you.